Hello everyone, this is Asif from Mango Education. Welcome to Hello Educator. This is the first episode of Science Stories. The stories from Obli Chandran, who is a science educator and communicator at uh, Mango Education. The story is on the eclipse that made Einstein famous. Hi, I'm Obli and I'm going to share an interesting story about a solar eclipse. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard about solar eclipses and maybe if you were lucky, you would have seen one uh, four months ago that was visible from India. And do not worry if you've not seen one, there is another chance that on June 21 this year, uh, some parts of the northern India will uh, witness the eclipse. So yeah, so what is this story about? So all of us know eclipses are beautiful to watch, of course, no doubt about it, uh, particularly the total solar eclipses because uh, the sky will for a brief moment darken, uh, revealing the stars in the daytime. So that is a spectacular sight to watch if you were actually under the shadow of the moon uh, during the total eclipse. Apart from the fact that the eclipses are beautiful, historically they have proven to be very useful in validating some of our ideas or revealing some of the things that we otherwise wouldn't have known about nature. So one of the things uh, is that it validated the point that a starlight can be bent. In fact, any light can be bent by the gravity. And this is a spectacular uh, uh, proposition back then when Einstein proposed that light will also be bent by uh, a, a object of that has huge gravity. Uh, this is easier said than proven. So when Einstein proposed this and people thought it was crazy and people and there was no uh, way that you could test it as well that he proposed this idea in 1915 when he uh, came up with this general theory of relativity and people were scrambling their heads on how to prove it if it were true. And, and there was a couple of scientists, a couple of astronomers like Sir Arthur Eddington and, and his colleague who thought the best way is like if we cannot test this uh, hypothesis in a lab we'll have to turn to nature for being the lab so he he thought can i can we use a solar eclipse as the right moment to test this hypothesis but how can you use a solar eclipse to um, to validate this hypothesis so his idea was this so whenever during a total total solar eclipse so when the sun is completely blocked from our view, when the moon completely blocks the sun, the sky darkens a bit and it will reveal the brightest stars that are in the sky at that moment during the eclipse. And the, during the totality phase, which would last for about six to seven minutes when the eclipse is really longer, so you have some good time uh, to uh, picture the sky and the stars at that moment uh, during the eclipse. So once the uh, moon sl moves slight, slightly away from the totality phase, again the sky would brighten again and you wouldn't be able to see the stars. But why? would he want to picture the stars uh, in the sky during the eclipse because the stars that are close to the sun they will have to the light from those stars will have to go past the sun before they can reach your eye and if the hypothesis that what einstein said that the gravity can bend light is true the presence of sun in the foreground would have bent the light that is coming from stars which are further behind would have bent the light of those stars and we would see the positions of those stars slightly different but what would we compare the positions of the stars to which is our reference point so of course the same set of stars that is being observed during an eclipse we could observe the same set of stars on some other day on some other month when it is visible in the night sky then we can take the picture of the same set of stars then you compare the pictures of that the same set of stars taken on some other time during the night time when it was visible during the night time and the same set of stars uh, taken during the eclipse if the positions are different the relative positions of the set of stars are different then it means the position from our point of view the positions of the stars can be distorted or position of the stars can be different only if the light is bent since the light is bent we see this the light could be coming from somewhere else and yes, and the set of stars that were chosen uh, during uh, this eclipse, by the way, happened in 1919, May 29. It's one of the greatest eclipses we had historically for, uh, you know, uh, for proving uh, such a great theory uh, hypothesis, right? So the set of stars that were chosen at that time was this constellation called Taurus. A Taurus is one of the bright constellation. You can find it close to Orion constellation for those of you who uh, stargaze regularly. 
um so and one of the stars that there are the, the constellation was it was lucky because we chose that constellation because it consisted of set of consisted of set of bright stars that would be visible during the uh, eclipse phase so luckily it was right behind the sun during the eclipse at that time so that was chosen and the same set of stars like i said was pictured uh, on some other time before the eclipse as well so to compare them so yeah so next time when you observe the eclipse you know it's not just that it is spectacular to observe it but also remember one of the greatest theories uh, that have that we have come up with in science the general theory of relativity was validated one of the uh, primary hypothesis of that theory was validated during a solar eclipse and ever since that eclipse a lot of other experimentation experimental verifications have been done to uh, validate that so 19 remember the date uh, 1919 may 29 the total solar eclipse and of course the the way uh, that there are a couple of uh, i think one or two eclipses before that uh, 1919 year uh, one was in 1917 which was um, uh, again people tried to uh, uh, observe that but still it was not some the the it was during the first world war so it was really difficult for these people to set up an expedition set up a team and go and observe it and it was with great difficulty that they got the permission in 1919 and they were able to lead a successful Uh, uh you know expedition and luckily the weather on that day cooperated remember if the weather was cloudy and this eclipse was not visible then the verification would have had to wait for another uh, couple of years uh, or much more because you need a longer eclipse so to take enough pictures not a short one or two minute eclipse so again lot of things favored on that day and the theory was proven i hope you uh liked the story so i'll uh, share you some other interesting facts uh, in the history of science later thank you